I'm Neil Gaiman. And, oh, about 12 years ago now, I wrote a story about a cat who came to my house and who fought the devil every night. It was called The Price. A man called Christopher Salmon fell in love with the story and wanted to turn it into a film. And he went to kickstarter.com and asked for $150,000 to turn it into a movie. And you people and I, actually, lots of us, and I was one of them, um, gave him money to see if he could make his dream a reality. And he met the $150,000 and made more than that. And um, it's really cool. It's really exciting. And I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you. And thank you to me, because I was one of you too. Welcome everybody. Um, what a way to start. A video message from Neil Gaiman himself. Couldn't have planned that one better. That came to me from, from Kat Meehouse, my co-producer, when Neil was out in California with her uh, taping a, an episode of The Simpsons, I guess. She suggested making a quick little tape to, to thank everybody and there you go. This is a little harder than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to have to get used to this. I'm not used to talking to the camera or, or babbling on about this stuff. Well, I babble on quite a bit, actually. As Neil alluded to, the visitor to the home in The Price is kind of a surprise if you haven't read the story. So I'm just going to offer this right now, right up front, as kind of a, a spoiler alert. If you're not familiar with the story and what happens, and you want to maintain that surprise, then in the Better not watch the rest of this. I wanted to start at the very beginning of this process. As I'm going through um, each stage, I thought it'd be cool to explain a little bit about what's involved and, and my thought process behind it. Uh, since this is a 3D movie, every single piece, every everything that you see on screen obviously doesn't exist, so it has to be created. And to do that, it needs to be designed. If you've looked at my website or anything, you'd know that, that I'm an artist myself, that I've drawn and sculpted and stuff since I was a little kid. Knowing that, it would be reasonable to ask, why would I need to work with another artist to help me design this film if, if I can draw and do all those things myself? Well, the answer to that, I think, has something to do with creativity itself, and that's a subject I'd really like to explore in these video blogs. For me, creativity is really taking things that already exist and putting them together in a way that's, that's different, that's fresh. Um, it's not creating something out of nothing. As I've worked with different artists throughout my career, I've noticed that there are you know, several different types, obviously, but there are some artists who, as they're drawing, as they're sculpting, right, right as it comes out of their pen or pencil, this incredible idea takes shape. It's there right from the very beginning, from the most loose sketching. I've known this designer that I'm working with on the price. Uh, his name is David Lobb. Uh, for over 20 years, and David is a phenomenal artist. He's done a lot of work, and I was going to show you some of his stuff here. In fact, why don't we do that right now? Okay, we're uh, here at the Salt Lake City Public Library. I'm going to check out some of Dave's work that's on display here. Dave has always been been my first choice to work on the price. He also has such a strong uh, style to everything that he does. I, I really like it. It's, it's got its own fresh kind of twist on things. You know, you, you can give him something like, okay, I need a mailbox for this one scene, and he'll draw something, and it's just slightly off kilter, you know, it's just slightly Dave, and uh, I love that. I mean, you think about it, if we're going to make everything for this film instead of going out and actually filming something live action, I mean, what's the, what's the point in trying to duplicate reality? At least for me, that doesn't interest me as, a, as an artist or a filmmaker at all. I'd, I'd much rather take something and, and design and create a world that uh, I couldn't see anywhere else. But this story, The Price, I feel like you know, totally matches those kind of sensibilities where it's kind of a parable, you know, so, so putting it in slightly more abstract uh, terms helps people to to connect to it more, I think. Anyway, we've worked together on a lot of different projects over, over several different years for several different markets and genres, and Dave has never failed to inspire me. When he sits down, he comes up with so many different ideas. He'll take the same basic idea or concept, you know, we both might have the same starting point, but he will see things and put things together in a way that I, would never have occurred to me. And then as soon as I see them, 
you know, just sparks my imagination right away, and I'm like, oh wow, you mean, oh this, I see what you're doing, and we could put it with this, we could, and it just goes from there. I put a link to a uh, a blog, an interview that was done with Dave for a local newspaper here, and uh, there's this picture of him in there. It says, "Time traveler, Civil War Dave." I mean, Dave is is notorious for taking and altering photographs and doing things to them, and this totally looks like that's what he did. You know, I saw it and I laughed. I thought it was really cool, and I was talking to Dave about it, and he's like. Yeah, I, I actually didn't touch that picture. I was I was Googling Civil War surgeons and I literally found that picture. And I was like, no way. I mean it looks it looks like him except aged a few years, you know, balding and stuff like that, but uh, it's hilarious. He said even his parents don't believe that, that he didn't Photoshop that or retouch that somehow. He's not super comfortable being on camera. We were joking around that, you know, every time I'd point the camera over towards his desk, you know, he just suddenly had left, you know, just see the chair wobble, you know, do this whole kind of Bigfoot thing. Anyway, I, I did get some footage of Dave while he was uh, doing some design work late one night. I'm not going to show you uh, the final designs, I'll show you some of the some of the conceptual work that was done. Uh, it's just like anything else, you try a whole bunch of different things and, and kind of get a feel for this, you like that. And Dave's so fun to work with that way, where he'll, he'll just start sketching stuff and try these rough things and invert it and flip it around and add this and take that away. And very intuitive feel to his design work. And the way we work the best is, you know, when I'm nearby and just watching what he's doing and I'll say, whoa, 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 that, you know, I like that. So like, really? Yeah, okay. You know, doesn't have to finish it or push it anymore, that's enough. For me to take it from there and go to the next stage. Uh, these images are concepts for the devil that comes to visit the house in the story. And what's cool about looking at the progression of, of these ideas that Dave and I have come up with is that you, you can see how one idea informs the next idea. And even though there are elements that I might like or not like from each design, they, they build on one another. And that's just tremendously inspiring me. I mean, look, look at all the choices I have here. It's like like going shopping, you know, I want those eyes, I want those teeth, I want that horn. It's fantastic. This little drawing of, uh, of this dog version of the devil was so inspiring to me that when I went to do these more elaborate illustrations for the animatic, I, I totally knew what I was going after. And that's, that, that really is the power of Dave's illustrations. There's just so much energy and so many ideas just packed into them. Uh, you know, since this story is kind of autobiographical, it does make sense that the main character should look like Neil Gaiman. And that in and of itself has been a blast to, to play with, to try and figure out you know, how exactly we're going to pull that off. You know, same with the, the house and the property. Even though we don't have to make them look like the real thing, it's still an awful lot of fun to play with. At one point, uh, Kat Meehaus asked me how I knew what Neil's house looked like after viewing the animatic. And I was like, what do you mean? You know, There's tons of pictures of it online. I didn't want to seem like some kind of freak stalker or something like that. And she was like, no, 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 not the, not the outside, the inside. And I was like, really? Because <laughs> I just took a wild guess at stuff and just, you know, made my own things up. And even though now there are, there are some, some decent photo references, I've, I've seen photos of his library, um, big and roll in his bedroom, stuff like that that's all online. I, I want to incorporate some of that into the design of the, the sets for where each of these things take place, each of the scenes take place. You know, I don't want to be um, restricted by that, though. And I definitely want to take the, the raw look and image and, and geometry of his home and, and the grounds around it and just tweak it a little bit. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed some of the things that you've seen. And I'll try and give you a little more detail on the next one as we look at digital modeling of the characters and, and also of everything else that uh, you're going to see in the price. Until next time, take care and talk to you soon.